Hi, boys and girls and parents. Welcome to another day of Number Corner. It's Miss Ferreira. I hope everybody had an amazing weekend and everybody stayed safe and healthy. Okay, let's look at our April calendar. I gave you a sneak peek uh, last time we were here. I showed you Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays for the 4th the fifth and the sixth. I hope all of you had the chance to cut out your shapes. I know I have mine cut out and maybe you were able to fold them and figure out if they are symmetrical or not. And also how many ways we can fold it to make it into equal parts. So let's look at the fourth first. Shape, the shape for the fourth, we do have a rhombus. Some of you remember seeing that in our class when we were uh, playing with our different shapes in class when we were still in school and what we can do with this rhombus We can fold it up We can fold it in half like that and then half Again, then when you open it up, we actually have it into four equal parts Each piece we can say it's one fourth because it's one piece out of four one two three four we can fold it another way. We can fold it in half from point to point, going down. And then we can also open it up, fold it in half the other way, sideways, point to point. And then when you open it up, it is cut into four equal parts. What I did was I traced the lines with my pen or marker, and I wrote one fourth on each of those pieces because each piece is one equal part out of four parts. Now when I go over here to my April calendar observation, I can type in rhombus because it is the name of the shape, but I'm going to teach you a new word for it. I'm going to call it here a quadrilateral. Let me get my other piece here. It is called a quadrilateral because there are four sides to this shape. One, two, three, four. So actually we could even go back to the first when we had a square. That is also a quadrilateral because it has four sides to it. Now when we folded this quadrilateral, we were actually able to break it apart into four equal parts. And we can check off here. Should we do exactly two, exactly four, or at least four, or zero? All right, if you think it can be folded into at least four equal parts, you are correct. I am going to copy this check mark and paste it here. And I'm also going to write one fourth because it was cut into quarters, we can call them one fourth. And was it symmetrical? Well, when we folded it, actually, let me get the one that's not marked up. If we do it from point to point, left to right, it is symmetrical because both sides are exactly the same. They are mirror images. I can also do it from top to bottom. And we actually made two triangles that time when we did it as well. And it is the same on both sides. So yes, it is symmetrical. So I'm gonna write, yes here, the quadrilateral is symmetrical. Okay, now we can look at the fifth. And if you notice there, we actually have a letter we have the letter E. I'm going to hold mine up for you there. And if we try to fold it like this, it's not going to be into even parts. You can tell it's not the same. So we're not going to fold it that way. But if you fold it from top to bottom, we can actually fold it in half perfectly even. So it will be symmetrical. I'll show you mine that I drew on already. If I draw a line going straight across there, the top part matches the bottom perfectly. So I was actually able to fold it in half. And I'm going to put, yes, it is symmetrical. But right here, what I'm going to write is just letter E. And we were able to fold it into exactly two equal parts. So I will put the check mark in this column for exactly two and we say that when it's cut in half and over here i will put yes it is symmetrical because the top is a mirror image of the bottom half top half bottom half of it 
two equal parts. All right, the last one we have for April the 6th, that is today, Monday, April the 6th, 2020. We have a very interesting shape here. Looks very strange to me. Now, I know my students, as soon as I say the name of this shape, you're gonna be like, what? That's not what that shape is, but it really is. This shape is actually a hexagon. I know you're probably thinking, how is that a hexagon? Well, let me show you here. Oh, that's on the wrong screen. Here we go. All right, now the hexagon that my students are probably used to looks like this shape right here. That was actually one of our stations, our math stations, when we were having our centers in class. But a hexagon is a two-dimensional flat shape with six sides. So I know you're used to this seeing this shape in the classroom when we can count the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, now let's count the sides on my shape here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This does have six sides, so it is actually a hexagon. Just like all these other shapes here, we have hexagons here. They are all hexagons because they all have six sides. So let me minimize this here. And I'm going to write hexagon for our name of the figure. And we didn't actually fold it yet, I'm sorry. I'm not sure if you were able to fold this at all at home and see if we can get it to fold into equal parts. If I fold it like that, as you can see, they're not the same. It's a lot longer up here than it is down here. And if I fold it this way, no, they're not exactly the same. So we can't check off exactly two because it does not fold into exactly two equal parts. I cannot put the check mark here for at least four because it does not fold into at least four equal parts. I have to put the check mark here for zero because there's zero equal parts when I fold it. So is it symmetrical? No, it is not. I'm going to put it in all capital letters. No, and I'm going to change that color to red. All right, so let's look here. You might notice a pattern with if it's symmetrical or not with our whole month of April so far. Is it symmetrical? Yes, yes, no. Yes, yes, no. Are you seeing a pattern? We have an A, A, B pattern, A, A, B. Now let's look at our pattern here for how many ways we can fold it and how it folds into equal parts. At least four, two, zero. Four equal parts, two equal parts, zero. So are you noticing that pattern? I hope so because tomorrow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually reveal tomorrow's shape and you can actually try to predict which column we're going to be putting the check mark in and if it's symmetrical or not because we can now start to see the type of pattern that we have on our calendar observation grid so let's go back over here i'm going to reveal the seventh for you so tomorrow is tuesday or tomorrow will be tuesday april the 7th 2020. i'm going to flip this over and you see here we have i cut mine out already we have a rectangle count the sides one, two, three, four. We learned a new word today of what we can call a shape that has four sides to it. So use your brains tonight, start folding it up and seeing where we're gonna put our check marks on our calendar observation grid, if it's going to be symmetrical or not. And also try to think of that new name that we learned for a figure that has four sides to it. Okay, let's go to our geo board here. Let me move this over a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Okay, the first shape we have here was our quadrilateral. And I am going to get the pencil here. Oh, I have to move that over. It's kind of hidden if I'm able to. Oh boy. Doesn't look like it's letting me move it today. Here we go. Let's see, maybe I can move it now. Nope, still not letting me move it. For some reason, it doesn't want to cooperate with me today. All right, so I'm just going to click on a different color here. Let's use yellow so it can really stand out. And on our quadrilateral, the first shape that we did, I'm going to draw a line going straight down. 
and there is our first line of symmetry there and we can split it in half but we can also split it this way in half but now it's broken up into quarters our letter e that we had we split it in half going this way so the top half and the bottom half they are exactly equal parts and it's like an ear um, a mirror image so that is symmetrical and then we had here our hexagon shape uh, there's no way we can draw any kind of line to make it into equal parts so today uh, you can clear this out and start practicing with the next shape that I showed you and remember what our shape is it is shape number seven. Parents, if you have the cutouts, feel free to cut out shape number seven. And there are four copies of that shape. So you can experiment, cut them all apart into pieces to show the equal parts. Play around with it and play around with the geo board with that shape. Okay, let's go to our days in school. We point to this and say 100. 110, 120, 130. 131, 132, 133. I'm going to add another one. After 133 comes the number 134. So today is the 134th day of the school year. Okay, let's go over here so I can add another one for today. Change the color to green so it matches. And then you can help me figure out what I need to erase with our number over here because this was yesterday's number not yesterday, I'm sorry, Friday. We weren't in school yesterday. All right, so Friday's number, we do have to erase one of the numbers. So let's look here. We have a group of 100, 110, 120, 130, 131, 132, 133, 134. Should I erase the blue number, the red number, or the green number? Okay, if you said the green number, you are correct. We do not have three ones anymore. We now have one, two, three, four ones left over. So I have to put a number four here. This equation from Friday, we made a big long equation. We said one group of 100 plus 30 plus three equals 133, 133. I'm gonna make a new problem today and instead of doing 100, I'm actually going to cut that in half. Does anybody know the doubles fact that equals 100? If you know it, whisper to your parents. I know it's a challenge question today. Okay, so if you split it in half, we actually have 50 plus 50. So I'm going to write that here. 50 plus 50 equals 100. So I'm changing it a little bit today. So that takes care of the 100. Plus, I'm gonna use the 30 again. I'm gonna cross that off and write the 30 here. Plus, we don't have three left over anymore today. We have one, two, three, four ones left over. Wow, that is a very long math problem, isn't it, boys and girls? It's a challenge today. I'm trying to challenge you every day as much as I can. Okay, so our problem reads 50 plus 50 plus 30 plus 4 equals 134. Oh, my goodness. Kiss your brains. That was a lot of hard work. Good job, boys and girls. Okay, let me go to the next thing here. And then we actually have something a little extra today too, which I'm going to show you. Okay, what I did up here, I moved all of the things, that, all the popsicle sticks that we collected on Friday from that week. I moved them up here. I put a little box around it. And I put a number one for week one of April. And we collected 13 popsicle sticks. We had one bundle of 10. So we say 10 when we point to it. And then we have some extra ones left over, 11, 12, 13. And what I did was I got some sandwich baggies. That way I can sort them and organize them by week. So this was week one. We have 13 popsicle sticks. But now we are into week two. Let me move this over and let's give this spinner a spin. Let me turn the marker off, though, for a second. All right, let's spin. And we landed on four. 
Let me move this over here. That means I have to move four popsicle sticks over here, one at a time. One, two, three, four. Okay, let me put that back on there for us. Okay, so far, so far for week two, we're only on the first day. We spun a four, so we have four popsicle sticks. Now, remember I say that we place them down on our mats like this as if we're doing tally marks. So tomorrow when we spin, the first popsicle stick that I have to put down has to go across. Like I'm gonna draw it real fast for you. So the first one we do tomorrow will go across like a tally mark because the fifth one goes across. Let me erase that. And let me bring you now to the new page because if you remember from our calendar, instead of all these shapes, we ended up having a letter on one of the cards on April the 5th, Sunday. That was a letter. And we have a little mystery to solve this month. We have this problem. It says four halves equal two blank. What we're going to do is keep track of all of the letters that appear on our calendar this month. And then we have to unscramble the letters and put them in these boxes and it will make a word. So what I'm going to do here, Oh, there we go. Sorry, this uh, it's all over the place today. Typical Monday. What I'm going to do is already on my, my red for today. I am going to write the letter E because there was a letter E on our calendar. That was the first letter that we came to on the calendar so far. And you might end up noticing a pattern with the shapes in the letter too. So you can think about that as you're trying to predict what will be coming up throughout the month. So let me go back to this again. We have the letter E. So, so far we have one of the shapes or one of the letters, I'm sorry. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We'll be seeing five more letters and then we have to unscramble it and it's gonna create a word to fill in this little riddle here. here. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you had a wonderful day today. We'll be back again tomorrow, Tuesday, April the 7th. And play around with that shape. Use your geo board and also you use your paper that you cut out. That way you can see if it's symmetrical and to see how you can cut it up into equal parts. And I will be seeing you tomorrow. Have a good day. Rock on. Bye.